Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Secretary of State for Education, Michael Gove. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we come to the part of the conference where we're going to talk about schools and what's changing in English education. And I thought it was most appropriate that you hear from people who are at the front line. So in a second, we'll be hearing from Greg, from Sally, and from Kudus about what's changing in English education. But before we do, I thought we'd hear a word from a friend of mine who's passionate about state education, who happens to be visiting a school in East Manchester this afternoon. It's our Prime Minister, David Cameron. David, are you ready to join us now? Um, hi, David. I'm you... ready. <laughs> hi, David. We know. Thank you. Hi, David. Can you tell us a little bit more about the school you're visiting and why you're visiting it? Well, I'm at Cedar Mount School in East Manchester. It's a relatively deprived part of our country, but it's visiting schools like this that can be absolutely inspirational. There's a new head teacher here who's been here for two years, who's already got this school from seven, just 17% of 16-year-olds getting five good A to C at GCSE, including English and Maths, to 36%. But she has formed an alliance with an academy school down the road, Altrincham Grammar School for Girls, and the ambition is to get that result up to 67%. How are they doing it? Well, it's, it's not rocket science, but it is brilliant leadership. It's about, a, it's about having a proper uniform. It's about having good discipline in the school. It's about having really high aspirations for all of the children, a sense that they all can achieve, and with the right leadership and the right teaching, they will achieve. I get to visit lots of amazing things in our country, but it's actually the schools I come to like this that give me the greatest sense that we, will, we really can do some extraordinary things for our young people. It's fantastic, David, and it shows how our Academy's programme is bringing hope to areas of the country which have been neglected in the past. I also know that you've had the opportunity to visit some of the new free schools that have opened just this term. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've seen and what it tells you? Well, there have been 24 free schools that have opened up, and I know that's not a huge number, but if you actually think in just 16 months to go from an idea on a bit of paper to a new school offering a great education to young people, it's a huge achievement. We went to visit uh, the free school in Norwich, uh, which has been established for a fifth of the cost of a normal primary school. It's already five times oversubscribed. The teachers are getting great results. The parents are enthusiastic. And you can see a whole generation of children getting a chance that they might not otherwise have had. I asked all the, um, the head teachers here who gathered together because in this academy group they're going to be primary schools, a special school, a secondary school. What is it they wanted from academy status? And they were just saying back to me, it's the freedoms that we want to have to, so that we can be free to teach in the right way, to set the aspirations high, to get a certainty about our future budgets, to make sure we can deliver for these children. So I think the academy programme, together with the free schools, it, it really can deliver and I think the exciting thing that I want to try and get across and I know you will Michael in your speech is that I think we now know what makes a great education it's insisting on rigor and high aspirations and giving our schools the freedoms and we've got to stick at it throughout this Parliament and I know that you're going to tell people about that when you speak thank you very much Prime Minister thank you